Good evening. Welcome to a time with ESL. We thank God for this beautiful Friday evening. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we begin today by giving you thanks. We thank you for your love endures forever. Your love never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed you, Lord, we thank God that we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy, the supply of your grace. Father, we want to thank you for revealing this to us through your word. And as we open our Bibles today, we pray that we will hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be at work in our lives. Father, will be at work in our hearts so that we can receive your word. Our prayer is that we will be transformed into your likeness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are still in our series, Biblical Lessons from Different Bible Characters. And today we are looking at the life of Joseph. Amen. Galatians 6, 9 tells us, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. So, let me do a quick summary on the life of Joseph. Sometimes when you have these Bible characters who actually are larger than life, it is a bit daunting because there's so much about their lives that you want to talk about. Well, Joseph was the 11th son of Jacob. He was born of Jacob's beloved wife, Rachel. Joseph enjoyed great benefit from his father because his father transferred all the love that he had for his beloved wife, Rachel, to this awaited, the long awaited child. Remember that Rachel was barren before she gave birth to Joseph. Three other women had children before Joseph was born. Due to Jacob's love for Joseph, he bought his son a coat of many colors. And it was this coat that created envy and enmity among his children. That was what caused the problem, the coat. Jacob's favoritism affected the life of Joseph. That was it. Now, Jacob and Joseph were very close. So they used to talk a lot. So due to the closeness between Jacob and Joseph, Joseph will often tell his dad all manner of gist, things that happened on the, in, in the field when the brothers were out. And there were evil reports. So Joseph would bring back evil reports about his brothers to his dad. And of course, this then caused much hatred for him by his brothers. We also know that Joseph had a gift of dreams. And when he first dreamt, the first dream he dreamt, he said he saw his brothers bowing down to him. This did not go well with his brothers at all. They automatically understood what this was about. Our younger brother, because our daddy likes you, Abby, you think that you are better than us. And then he had a second dream. In fact, when Joseph had that second dream, his father had to rebuke him. Although his dad kept the dreams to himself. He kept them at heart. Now, where did this whole K-leg enter the story of Joseph? There was a time when dad asked Joseph to go and check up on your brothers. And Joseph left. He was inquiring around when they said, ah, your brothers are not actually where they are meant to be. They have gone somewhere else. So they went to have fun somewhere. And somebody saw them, told Joseph, and Joseph went there. As Joseph was approaching the brothers, the brothers saw him from a distance. Hmm. Immediately, they said, see, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Opportunity. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. That was the plan. The plan was to kill Joseph. They were so angry and sick and tired of him. And I guess he was wearing that coat. He said, plus this coat, we're going to kill him. So as they started planning, how are we going to kill him? Their brother Reuben said, ah, ah, let's not kill him. Just throw him in a pit. Don't kill him. Because Reuben decided on his own that, okay, after 
I will go back and I will let this boy out of the... I will, I will devise a way for him to escape. So, they got the coat. Took it off him. I'm sure they was like beating him small. Threw him inside the pit. So Ruben was content with that. You know, some of us are like that. We don't want them to kill somebody, but they can beat them. They can treat them badly. They are still part of the plan. His belief was that later he would go and free his younger brother. But then he went somewhere. It was in the somewhere went in. <laughs> when he decided to went in somewhere, that one of his brothers, Judah, said, ah, ah, guys, why should we even kill this one? Shebi is very valuable. Let us sell him. Let us sell him. At that point in time, their brothers, a group of Ishmaelites were passing. And Ishmaelites were slave traders. You remember Ishmaelites? The children of... Still they are cousins. They are cousins. So they sold Joseph to the slave master. Joseph eventually ended up in Egypt, became a steward to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials. And during his time in Egypt, Joseph was favored by Potiphar, and Potiphar put him in charge of the household. This caused Pot uh, Joseph to be noticed by Potiphar's wife. Maybe if they had kept Joseph in the stables or the kitchen, she wouldn't have noticed him. And Potiphar's wife developed a sexual interest in Joseph. But Joseph was a good steward of God and he rejected the advances of his ogre's wife. Because of that, he was set up and was imprisoned for a crime that he did not commit. Joseph was not going to come out of jail. He wasn't going to come out of jail alive. He was meant to remain in jail and die in jail. So all of these things... These experiences were things beyond Joseph's control. But despite all the challenges that Joseph encountered, he knew his God served him diligently any and everywhere he found himself. He just kept on doing the right thing. Even in prison, we read that he was made head of the prisoners because an excellent spirit was found in him. During his time in the prison, Joseph was fortunate to meet Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker. Both of them had some strange dreams. Joseph was able to interpret their dreams. Joseph actually said to them, please, when you come out of this place, please mention me to Pharaoh. Joseph suffered in, in, in prison. Some people say, you know, Joseph was enjoying. How can you enjoy in prison? Go to prison now. Go to prison. You want to enjoy? Go to prison and enjoy. But we know the story. The baker was executed. The cup bearer, however, was saved. He didn't remember Joseph again. He didn't remember Joseph. Two years passed. Joseph was just, I'm sure it was like, now wow, now here, my life go end. He did not remember Joseph until King Pharaoh had a dream and no one in the kingdom could interpret. I guess the cupbearer realized, you know, it's like when you look at the story of Nebuchadnezzar. If the king has a dream and no one can interpret, people are going to die. People are definitely going to die. So Joseph, at that point, didn't realize that he was about to step out of the prison. All of a sudden, the cupbearer remembered. He remembered Joseph and mentioned him to Pharaoh. Sir, there's one small boy. He has a gift of interpretation. Can I call him for you? And after Joseph interpreted the dream, and not only did he interpret the dream, he then told Pharaoh what Pharaoh needed to do concerning his dream. He was made second in command to oversee the years of abundance and the years of famine. Pharaoh also gave Joseph 
Asenath, the daughter of the Potiphera priest of all, as his wife. Now, during the years of famine, because the famine came, Joseph met his brothers and tried to get information about his father and his brother Benjamin from them. And, you know, we all know the story. He even tested them to see whether they had changed their ways. The brothers never actually changed their ways because you'll see that later in the story. Because when their dad died, they came up with a lie because they were convinced that Joseph was still going to deal with them. Anyway, Joseph revealed himself to his brothers and after then his father and all his brethren came to Egypt to dwell, but Pharaoh put them in Goshen. We know the story also that Joseph gave birth to two sons called Manasseh and Ephraim. Joseph died at the age of 110 years old and he said to them that God would one day visit Israel again and said, when that time comes, they must carry his bones and take them out of Goshen. Amen. I try. Did I try? Did I try? With that summary, the life of Joseph. If you are going to give me percentage, what will you give me? At least you give me 50%. I tried. Amen. Amen. Now, there are many biblical lessons that we can learn from the life of Joseph. And we'll be looking at them this evening. The first one I got from this, mothers, fathers, playing favoritism breeds jealousy in the home. Do you hear me? If you play favoritism with any child, it will breed jealousy in the home. Jacob played favoritism by favoring Joseph at the expense of his brothers. It is that that gave birth to hatred for Joseph and nearly destroyed his home. That is it. it I lay the blame at the feet of Jacob. Jacob created this mess. It's as if Jacob forgot how easily Similar actions between his mother and father caused that separation between himself and his twin brother Esau. As parents, we should love all our children equally and avoid unnecessary sibling rivalry among our children. A sister said Joseph had a big mouth. I have a big mouth. I had a big mouth. I used to report my brothers recklessly to my parents. Did that mean that my brothers wanted to kill me? No. Siblings fight. But when you pitch one child against the other, rest assured you, you are creating a serious problem. The children of Jacob, yes, they were envious of Joseph because there were a lot of reasons. But that jealousy was what led to hatred. They were ready to take his life. And if not, for the plan and purpose of God, for Joseph's life, Joseph would have died. I hope you know that. Joseph was a dead dog. It was just a matter of what day were they going to kill this boy. And so as believers, let all of us learn to treat people equally. Don't breed jealousy with our actions to which people will use to wreak havoc within a family, even with your staff. Some people you will hear, I know that some people have employed some domestics that are actually wicked. But please, please, be very careful. And if there's anyone here that is still employing underage children as domestics, you are breeding a gigantic problem for yourself. Please, don't. It's not right. Number two, what I have learned is develop good character develop good character hmm. we see this in romans 12 too, and i'm not going to read the scripture so in fact if we want to look at the first one about sibling rivalry and don't play favoritism please go and look at first timothy 5 21 i'm not going to read those scriptures to you in your study time you will read those scriptures 
Joseph was a good servant of God. He developed a good character despite his upbringing. Even though his father spoiled him. Even though he had bad boys as senior brothers. Jacob still maintained a good character. He did not allow the fact that he was his father's favorite enter into his head. He was not spoilt and he was not rude. Because we didn't see anything there other than the fact that he would always, and I believe it was because he was close to his dad. There are certain things I'm, I'm extremely close to my last, ex, I'm very close to all my children, but my last child, I'm extremely close to him, extremely close. And I find now that when we have conversations, I find my son not holding back on some of the things he is saying to me because he knows that there are some things he will say that I may not be able to. I see him, he's now filtering what he says to me. Do you understand? So Joseph was actually a really, really good boy. He wasn't like his dad. You know, his daddy was a, 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 a trickster. Joseph wasn't any of that. Joseph developed a strong, strong, godly character. Even though he was a slave in a foreign land, he did not change. He continued to look to God. And it was his good character that stood out among other slaves in Egypt. All of us, we must endeavor to develop good character in life. Because it is that character, with your good character, it will give you great opportunities to gain respect and trust from other people. There are some people that you yourself know. That if they say to you good morning, you will go outside to look. You, you know it's morning, but if they say good morning to you, you will go outside to look to see if it is actually not midnight. Good character can also bring recommendations that will elevate one in life. What did I learn from the story of, or the life of Joseph? Being productive and diligent, it pays. You see that? Go and check it out in Ecclesiastes. Chapter 9, verse 10. Joseph, he was diligent and he was productive in the house of Potiphar. And this made him the head of all things in the household of Potiphar. Also, when, when Pharaoh asked him to interpret the dream, not only did he interpret the dream, he showed Pharaoh that he was a good manager of food, Greek affairs. Only God knows where Jacob got that, um, Joseph got that from. It was that good report, the good report that took him from the prison to become the second in command in Egypt. It was not the interpretation of the dream. It wasn't. He was diligent. Diligence paved the way for him to be able to manage the food crisis during the time of, of, of famine. Everything that was given to Joseph to do, he always came out with the best solution and the best result. From this story, the story of Joseph, it shows we must all endeavor to be the best we can be at our places of work. Don't be idle and don't be an eye pleaser. Be diligent and in due season, God will certainly reward you. He will reward the labor of your hands with success and increase. And of course, also in the work of God, we should be fully committed and don't be weary in achieving good results for God. Don't be. Sometimes, you know, you will see somebody, eh? all of a sudden, you will see some pastor on, on social media and you're like, ah, this pastor is everywhere. Do you know, you will find out that those videos that you are looking at, there are videos from five years ago, six years ago. It's not just today. Do you understand? It's not just today. All of us need to be fully committed, not weary in achieving good results for God. Because when the time comes, the time will come. Another thing I learned is this. And especially for, you know, I have some sisters that I don't even like talking to them any longer because they just come and they just make me they just make me tired. 
Understand this. God is your protector and your guide. Nobody can do anything to you. I say this. No witch can witch me. No juju can juju me. What is it? It cannot work for me. You can check that in Psalm 46 1. Who is your who is your refuge? God is your refuge now. God is your refuge. Amidst all the challenges that came to Joseph in his lifetime, God was always there with him to protect him. Even in prison, Joseph received favor. God protected Joseph because of his faithfulness. Even when the plans of God for his life were not clear to him, what did he do? He held on to his faith that God will see him through. It was God that guided him to abstain from sexual sins. Joseph depended on God completely, totally for everything that concerned him. And at the end of the day, he profited from God's protection and guidance. See, oh, me, I know this for a fact, that God does not allow his own to suffer loss. Even in temptation, he will always make a way for escape. Even another thing I've realized about God is that God will always break protocol to protect his own chosen people. Another lesson we get from the story of Joseph is that of forgiveness. You can check that out in Ephesians 4.32. Joseph practiced total forgiveness. And it is a true trait of a child of God. Joseph did not hold any grudges. He did not even try to take revenge against his brothers. He was even the one begging them at the end of the day. Telling them, don't worry, brother. The reason this thing happened, you thought it was a bad, it was to do me ill. No, God orchestrated everything. I needed to be in Egypt at this critical time. He was the one consoling his brothers. See, it's not easy. Ah, it's not easy. But we must learn to forgive everyone if you say you are a child of God. Jesus forgave all his oppressors. Now, Jesus was killed. They beat him. They spat on him. They lied on him or lied against him. What, what did they do to Jesus? He forgave them. The oppressors, he forgave the accusers. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, then forgiveness is also a trait that should be found in us. <laughs> ah, the story of Joseph. The story of Joseph. Sometimes, you know, if you say, God, please let my life be like Joseph. Get ready for pro max suffering. But we already have the story. So you know what you should do when you are in the challenges, when you are going through the challenges, knowing that God is there with you. You see, many things can happen to one in life that one minute you are high, the next minute you are down, rock bottom, scattered, everything bad is happening to you. You may find yourself in a place that you never ever envisioned. You are like me. Ha! Am I the one going through this thing right now? But look at this. God himself is a master planner. There is nothing you are going through today that God is not aware of. It has not taken me, it may have taken you by surprise, but it didn't take God by surprise. God can turn any unfavorable situation to a positive outcome. Look at the life of Joseph. God turned the life of Joseph around for good. And I know that God is still in the business of doing such. God will also turn all undeserved adversities into greater opportunities for success and good results. Please, key into the plans of God for your life today. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this word because just like when we prayed yesterday with the life of David, it affects all of us. Father, we want to thank you because you are the almighty and you are the all-knowing God. And you have orchestrated our journeys. You are aware of everything, where we are right now. Whatever it is we are going through, you are aware, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you this evening because you are a God who can turn every evil intention into a beautiful story. We thank you because you are 
The kind of God who keeps his promises no matter how long it takes. Thank you for being a God that does not go on break. A God that does not sleep ever. You are indeed El Shaddai, the all-sufficient and almighty one. Lord, we want to acknowledge that your plans and your purposes are greater than our circumstances. Your plans and purposes are even greater than our understanding. So we pray this evening, help us, Lord, to identify your hand at work in all the unpleasant seasons of our lives. Just like it was with Joseph, Father, our prayer is that we will not be discouraged by the seasons that may feel like we are in prison or we are in a pit. Father, let us just know that all of these things are preparations for the palace. Hallelujah. Even when we are in the pit, we know you are with us, God. When we are in the prison, Adonai, you are still working. And we trust in your divine providence, Lord. And we believe that you are working out your perfect plans for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let us never lose hope or faith in the midst of whatever storm we are going through. Father, we pray that during the times of adversity, we will continue to cling to your promises, Lord. Father, we will be able to surrender to your will. Because God, you are the one that knows the bigger picture. We can only see a bit, but you see everything. You see the end from the beginning. And so, Lord, like Joseph, we are going to pray that we will stand for holiness in everything that we do, Father. Father, that we will continue to please you regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the consequences. Father, we ask you to provide us, Lord Father, with the power to flee all temptation and to pursue only holiness, Lord, to pursue righteousness. <laughs> Father, and as Joseph did with his brothers, hmm. Father, help us to show compassion. Help us to extend forgiveness to everybody that has wronged us, everyone that has offended us. Father, and during our difficult seasons, Father, help us to look out for the interest of others. Father, when others are going through pain, and we are also going through pain, Father, that we will also be able to show them kindness and show them concern in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we are able to demonstrate good stewardship, strong work ethic in our places of, of business, in our workplaces. Father, that we will be people of integrity. Father, our desire is that in everything that we do, whether in word or deed, everything will be done to your glory and to the honor of your name. Father, wherever it is we go, Lord, Father, surround us with favor, surround us with success in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please grant us favor with people of worldly influence for your name's sake. Lord, our prayers that our gifts like Joseph will make room for us and that our lives will honor you in every season in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you bless Potiphar's house because of Joseph. Father, may you bless all those whose lives are connected to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Adonai, we just thank you because you are constant. We thank you that you will not allow our difficult seasons to destroy us in the mighty name of Jesus. Indeed, you are Jehovah Nissi. You are the Lord who is our banner. All glory, all adoration and all praise be unto you, Lord. Father, we give you thanks today, Lord. Father, we give you thanks. Because your love always endures. It doesn't fail. There are so many ways, Lord, that we will have failed you. Thank you. We have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. Father, thank you for this word we have heard today, Lord. All honor, all glory, all adoration be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I'm so happy this week. We've learned so much. We've learned so much from these different Bible characters. Um, please, in your study time, look over, use those scriptures, and just do your small, small Bible study on your own.
you know we know that this year is our year of prayer this is something that we all need to be diligent about in 2024 amen so beloved look forward to as many of you who are going to participate in our vigil tonight it's so interesting it's still along the same lines um, divine opportunities and purpose looking at our divine opportunities and purpose because we know that god has great 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 plans for us plans that he wishes that they are fulfilled in our lives and god is not just wishing this desiring this he is watching to see that his word concerning our lives is fulfilled we mustn't forget that the devil does not want to see this plan actualized and what does he do how does he come up come how does he try to do this by getting us to misuse the opportunities that God gives us. That is what his plan is, but it will not come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. If you're interested in rebirth, what we do in our ministry, kindly visit www.rebirthrwc.org. God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend and remain lifted in his presence always. Amen. <laughs>